Today is Trinity Sunday. When we um, observe, commemorate, celebrate the mystery, as Martin Luther says, the mystery that God is one, yet three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he certainly understood, and as have Christians throughout the ages, that we can't understand God apart from that. It's the way we understand God. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the sermon. Our other theme today is uh, gathering resources for growing ministries. So we're going to talk about gathering resources and stewardship and what that all means. You'll notice in the prayers there will be um, a prayer for sympathy for the family and friends of Ed Wood. Many of you don't know Ed. Ed and Verge have been members of Messiah for oh, 12, 15 years, somewhere in there. They attend Saturday night worship. Uh, and Ed uh, died Friday afternoon, about 4, 4.30. His funeral is going to be Wednesday morning at 10. All right, we have a couple of... Um, on this rock celebrate mission um, announcements and while those two are coming up I am going to give one last announcement about our, our group of young parents and and the young children anybody remember what that's called Sprouts, thank you. The Young Sprouts, we're going to meet next Saturday. Uh, but be, because there's so many complications in people's lives, they're moving that to the 13th. So remember that. Okay, Lisa or... Oh, wait, ex excuse me. Let's have James first. James, we're going to let Melissa get around you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is James Solett. I've been a member of Messiah for about four years now and uh, currently serving my second year on church council. And I'm here this morning to talk to you a little bit about uh, Messiah's fifth mission strand, which is gathering resources. Uh, I'd like to start uh, by posing a question. Um, when we think about gathering resources, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Money, right? The stuff right here. And uh, you kind of step back and look at it. It's kind of a weird thing to get excited about. It's just a six inch by two and a half inch piece of paper. Got a picture of a guy on the front, picture of a building on the back. Um, but maybe it's not the, the paper so much as what that paper represents. Um, for me, it, it represents sacrifice. Uh, it represents showing appreciation for God's blessings by giving some small portion of that back. And it represents ownership in and support of the good works done th uh, through mission here at Messiah Lutheran Church. Over the past several weeks, we've been celebrating those missions and the good works that they accomplish. But it's important to realize that the majority of those works would not be possible without the history of generous uh, support by this congregation or the, uh, the wonderful facilities we have here at Messiah. As you're aware, the Upon This Rock Celebrate Mission is a capital funds appeal to care for and pay down the debt incurred uh, by our building facilities. We've come a long way since the initial land acquisition and building construction almost 10 years ago. 
and have cut our debt nearly in half. Unfortunately, we're losing momentum. The last campaign had 78 pledges for about $350,000. That's only about 22% of the total giving units at church. And I think we can do better this time. Uh, we're already off to a good start. As of last week, we've got 36 pledges uh, for over $193,000. But we're not quite there yet, and every dollar counts. Uh, to illustrate this, if we receive those same 78 pledges, the remaining percentage of giving units would only need to pledge $8.25 a week, and we would double the amount. And it sent us well beyond our dream goal of $600,000 pledged. So I ask that you prayerfully consider making a gift to this important mission of Messiah Lutheran Church. And we ask that everyone turn in a pledge form, even if you are unable to make a pledge at this time. It will help us make uh, you know, financial decisions going forward. And finally, in closing, I'd like to say that although financial stewardship is the focus of this appeal, it is just one resource. And our mission strand is about gathering resources, as in plural. Your time, your talents, your ideas are all just as important for, a sex, for successful mission work here at Messiah. So I'd encourage you to find at least one mission uh, that you'd like to contribute to. This congregation is full of amazing, wonderful people, and there's no better way to get to know them than by doing God than by doing God's work with them. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you. I'll go next. Well, I'm Vicki Donnell. I think a lot of you probably know me. I've been around a long time. In fact, I, it's hard to imagine that this is the beginning of our fourth campaign that I've been a, a part of. So I'm blessed, but I'm mostly blessed when I walk into the sanctuary every time I come in. And I know those of you that have come to us since we've had this building. Uh, you might have thought we had it all forever, but we haven't. And so those of us that have seen it from the very beginning are so, we're, we're just glad that we have it now to share with you. I'm sorry Bill Roark isn't here today because I would talk about the time he called me, what now, 12 years ago, and said, would you be a part of this? And so it's been a real blessing. But next week, we will be focusing on our last strand of our mission. And that is that we offer um, healing and care, care and healing to all in need. And I'm active with our health ministry here at church. And one of the things that we try to do is we try to provide lots of opportunity for prayer, all kinds of prayer. Um, and uh, we have various prayer groups uh, that are part of our congregation, and next week we'll have some information to share with you all about that. But I want to bring to you a special opportunity uh, for prayer. Next weekend, beginning on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, going through for 24 hours until 8 o'clock on Sunday morning, we will have a prayer vigil um, that will be going on here about this campaign. And we've had these prayer vigils in the past, and I must say, um, I think they've contributed a lot um, to our efforts with up, our Up On This Rock campaigns. It is an opportunity for you just to enter the church any time during that 24 hours. We'll have prayer stations set up throughout the building uh, with up, giving you some ideas of, of what to pray for, um, if you need those. If you don't, of course, uh, we welcome you just to have private contemplative prayer um, on your own. I think, you know, we have a lot of, to pray for all of our mission themes, but I think particularly next week, we want to pray for generosity. Generosity on the part of each one of us, as James says, that we can all dig a little deeper knowing that we will be blessed time and time again over what we're able to contribute to this fund. You know, at one time uh, when we started this building project, we were making payments of $18,000 a month, and we had great hopes that we wouldn't be here having a fourth campaign. 
And now we are forced to, our, our minimum payment is $8,000 a month. Uh, we've been able to make $10,000 a month some months, but I really hope for the day that we can get back to making $18,000 a month payments and we can get on with really celebrating our mission strands um, that are so important to Messiah Congregation. So please, this will be out at the in Mission Hall. I just encourage you to sign up. If you can't sign up next weekend, if you're at the lake or wherever you might be, I would just ask that you whisper a little prayer for generosity. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Lisa Westland, and I'm here today to personally invite all of you to come, or to stay, actually, on the 14th of June, two Sundays from now, for a picnic and a good time of fellowship and fun and games for the youth and anyone who's young at heart, too. So go home today and mark your calendar. It's an important day. It's Commitment Sunday when we turn in our pledge cards for the fun drive for the building as we continue to be good stewards of our beautiful facility here at Messiah. The picnic requires nothing from you other than to come and have a good time. Food and beverage and fun will be provided, so you can't beat a deal like that. So be sure to mark your calendar, plan to stay two weeks from today at noon for the picnic. And I look forward to seeing all of you there is a sign-up sheet at the information desk in the mission hall, and we'd ask you to sign up to help us be prepared for the number of people that will come and have a good time with us. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Lisa. I think I'm done with announcements. Please rise and sing.
Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. and trust and hope we confess our sins almighty and merciful God you established your church with the power of the Holy Spirit fill us with that sacred fire that we may ignite with a passion for your will Inflame our hearts to do good works in the building of your church. Finally, burn down the walls that keep us from you. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Yes, indeed, we are sinners, and we confess that, we understand that, we know that. We don't need anyone to tell us that. But the good news is that God in Christ accepts us, loves us, makes us his children. So I am pleased to be able to announce these words that for the sake of Jesus Christ, God Almighty forgives you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our gospel lesson this morning is from the Gospel of St. Mark, the 10th chapter. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. I'd uh, like to invite the young people to come forward. <laughs> well, good morning. Today is Trinity Sunday, so I bought, brought some symbols for God. I know this looks like a glove, but it's supposed to represent a hand. In fact, a hand upside down like this in blessing is always a symbol, has always been a symbol for, for God. God reaching down in blessing. Notice in this stained glass window right here above the baptismal font, you see two hands reaching down Although, um, and, and so it's always a symbol for, for God. God the Father is a symbol for a hand reaching down. If you look on that mosaic out in the hall, you'll see a hand. Who do you think that represents? Jesus and his death on the cross. Jesus is the way we understand that God really cares about us and he's willing to come and live like us, teach us, love us, feed us. That's what he did when he was on earth. Heal people. That God really does care about us. So without Jesus, we would not understand that about God. And now notice, that's a, a bird upside down, flying down, we call that the descending, the, the dove represents the Holy Spirit descending down into our hearts. Every one of our windows, just about every, yes, every one of our windows has a dove representing the Holy Spirit descending down. I think there's one behind the beam right there. I can't see it. Represents the Holy Spirit. That's Christians have come to understand that great mystery that we have one God. How many gods do we have? One. But we understand God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's just the only way Christians have come to understand God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I'm going to teach you something today. 
something I wasn't taught when I was a kid because I was part of a community of Lutherans that didn't believe in crossing yourself. But Martin Luther says that he would put, mark himself with the sign of the cross every morning when he got up and every night before he went to bed. So we're going to teach you how to do that. The first thing you do is touch your forehead. T take your right hand and bring it up to your forehead. You can go ahead and do that. And then say, and you can say it, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's try that again. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Did you know that that's all right to do? As I say, Martin Luther did it, said he did it every morning and every night. And who knows how many other times of the day. It's just a good reminder that we belong to God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your revelation as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us to believe the mystery. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever noticed uh, there's some great mysteries that happen in life? Aren't there? Let me give you an example. Where do the coffee scoops go in this congregation? It, it, does somebody have some great coffee scoop uh, collection somewhere I don't know about? It's happened more than once, but I came in yesterday now. The only job I was given for the Saul Snyder's funeral was to make coffee. So I come in, getting the coffee pots ready, going to make coffee, it's little after 7 in the morning. Not only can I not find the scoops, I cannot find the coffee. Somebody took both the, the decaf and the regular coffee out of the cabinet, and of course the scoops are in those containers. So if you could help me solve that mystery, where are those scoops? So I had to go and I got uh, fresh canisters of coffee, and I got the wrong size measuring cup and guessed. And when I guessed at how much coffee to put in, I put in no, more than normal. Well, here we are on Trinity Sunday and we have the mystery of the Trinity. Martin Luther certainly called it a mystery and it is. But Christians have just said, we, we can't understand God any better than Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, the Apostle Paul, in talking to the Corinthian church, of course, the Apostle Paul had a, a little bit of an adversarial relationship with the Christians in Corinth. And he said, you know, when you're thinking about us, just think of us as servants of Christ. 
and stewards of the mysteries of God. And that's a good way for us to think about ourselves as servants in Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. One of those mysteries that we're stewards of is the mystery of the Trinity. But um, the gospel is the big mystery, the big treasure that we are stewards of. I think of um, the Apostle Paul uh, earlier in the previous chapter he says, uh, talks about how this is all considered foolishness by the Gentiles, foolishness by the Greeks. He says the reason they consider it foolishness or if you understand the way the, the Greeks understood God they understood their gods sitting high on Mount Olympus being very aloof they used the word apathetic. They didn't care about humans. They didn't care what happened on the earth. They were just up having their lives of pleasure. And they could not think of a godly life other than a, a life of pleasure. A god, they believed, would not have anything to do with humanity and its stress and troubles and problems, they're suffering. So when they heard of the gospel, that God actually came in the form of a human being, God came to this earth in Christ and lived among us, taught, healed, fed, even suffered, as we do, they go, that's foolishness. So the Apostle Paul says, this treasure we hold, this gospel that God in Christ came to us, is just foolishness. And then to think, the Apostle Paul says, that he died on the cross. The cross is real foolishness to those Gentiles, those Greek thinkers. And of course he says it was scandalous to the Jews, the fact that God would accept. Hey, here we are on, on uh, Trinity Sunday, the song that we would traditionally sing is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. What's the view of God for Jewish people? God is holy perfect, pure. Humans are not. So the gospel would say, because of Christ and his death on the cross, we unholy, imperfect, not pure people are accepted by a loving God. In fact, made holy because of transfer. Christ takes our sins upon him. We're made holy, declared holy. So that's scandalous to the Jews. So I'm going to look at two things. I would like to look at two things today, this morning, about being stewards of the mysteries of God. And that is this unconditional acceptance God gives toward sinners, you and I. And the other one is the fact that we are called children of God, accepted by God, made his children. Let's talk about acceptance. Watchman Nee, that famous uh, Christian pastor in China, he, he lived in China before, and he, he, of course, became a Christian before the communists took over and he was driven out of China by the communists and one of his converts young man came to him and said Pastor Ni nee, I, 
I'm going crazy. I think I'm going to lose my salvation. I'm going to lose my salvation. I'm sure of it. No matter how much I pray that God would keep, that help me, to give me the strength to keep me from sinning, I go and sin anyway. It's driving me crazy. God is going to reject me. I'm going to lose my salvation. And Watchman Nee said, excuse me, you're missing the point. You see, I have, you see my dog? My dog gives me great delight. My dog is well-trained. My dog is obedient. My dog is housebroken. My dog never messes in the house. My dog is, is just a perfect dog. Loves me. I take great delight in my dog. But on the other hand, in the kitchen is my infant son. And my infant son doesn't do what I say, is noisy, cries all the time, throws its, his food around. My infant son is a mess. And not only that, he fouls his clothing. What a mess. But when you look at my dog, when I look at my dog and I look at my infant son, my dog perfect, my son a mess. Oh, but I so delight in my son. I love my son way more than I love my dog. So he said to his young convert, you are a mess. But the good news, and we could say the mystery, mess and all, God loves you and I, takes delight in you and I. Yes, the acceptance of God. The fact that God accepts us, that's a radical mystery. And we're stewards of that mystery. The other one is, we're claimed, God claims us as his children. I don't know if that gives you great strength. To go out, uh, I guess to quote um, Garrison Keillor, to go out and do what needs to be done. I'm a child of God. I don't know if that gives you courage in life. Let me give you an example of someone who that gave courage to. Washington Carver. The, um, George Washington Carver, the uh, famous botanist. He um, was asked in 1921 to give a presentation to the Congressional Ways and Means Committee. And back in 1921, it was a different day and age, and people could be openly racist. And he went and stood before the Ways and Means Committee. And uh, people there verbally mistreated him with racial slurs. And he stood there, and his first inclination was to pack up and leave. But he said in his autobiography, George Washington Carver had something, a knowledge that we all need. He stood there, and he said to himself, I am a child of God. These people are not going to define me in any other way. I am God's child. I am not going to let them take from me the will of God. And he believed it was the will of God for him to stand there and make a presentation to the Congressional Ways and Means Committee. So he stood there. And he was granted 20 minutes. And he gave 20 minutes of his presentation, at the end of which 
Um, the uh, president of the Ways and Means Committee stood up and said, um, I'm asking for an extension. And they gave him an extension for another 20 minutes. And then after that, another 20 minutes. After that, another 20 minutes. And the chair of the Ways and Means Committee finally got up and said, after he had spoken for nearly two hours, he said, can we just let him speak until he's done? And he spoke before the Ways and Means Committee for several hours. And, he was, and when he was done, they all stood up and applauded. George Washington Carver understood one of those great mysteries that we're stewards of, that God claims us as his children. That should give us great strength in life, great courage, courage to do God's will, courage not to let anyone else's label uh, be that which marks us. We're children of God. So what do we do at Messiah? We're talking about um, how we gather resources. The greatest resource we have is the gospel. We're stewards of that gospel. We must always have that proclaimed in worship, in teaching, in our lives, when we feed the poor, when we have child care centers, when we make quilts, everything we do needs to be shaped by the mysteries of God, shaped by the gospel. We're stewards. It's a holy business we have, being stewards of those mysteries. And there are times, though as stewards, we're asked to do more than we think we can do. I gave that story of the rich young man who went to see Jesus. And he said, asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life. And if Jesus says, basically Jesus was saying, if you want to do something, if you think it's all about you, let me tell you what you must do. Follow those Ten Commandments. He goes, oh, I've done that from my youth. Jesus says Jesus loved him. Follow the, the Ten Commandments from his youth. Then Jesus said, if you really think it's up to you, give away all you have. Give it to the poor and come and follow me. And he went away sorrowful because he had many possessions. What he didn't know is it's not up to him. He needed to get the focus off of him. But let's talk about that for a moment. Have you ever been asked, have you ever had a rich man moment when someone asked of you more than you thought you could give? Let me just give you an example of, uh, of one time it happened in my life. It's happened a, a few times. This was in another church. We had a capital funds campaign. We are a mission congregation. We uh, had an outside group come in and, and um, run our uh, capital funds campaign. The director of our uh, appeal said to me, it, it took me out to lunch, and I thought this was just going to be a lunch. <laughs> Instead, he, he started telling me what my responsibilities were with this appeal. And one of the things he said was, I expect you to be the first with a major lead gift. And I'm going, 
Does he know who he's talking to? I have young kids at home. We have no savings. I took this job as a mission pastor and I'm paid below guidelines. And Mick and I already think we've topped out our giving. We're giving as much as we can to the church. And now he says, it's your responsibility as the pastor to give the first major gift. He even made it sound like mine was supposed to be bigger than anybody else's. Well, over the years, Mick and I have found that challenge to be a good thing for two reasons. One is, we have found over the years, we have been able to give much more than we ever thought we could. And the more amazing thing is, we've always found that there's always been enough left over. Well, today, we're talking about gathering resources, a day full of mysteries. And the mystery is that God does take care of us. He does stretch us. But we are stewards. That gospel stewards of that holy gospel, stewards of everything it takes to be able to proclaim that gospel in word and deed. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our ties and offerings.
in the church by your life-giving spirit and adopted us as your own children. Inspire us to be great stewards of your mysteries. Bless our Upon This Rock Celebrate Mission Appeal. Lord, in your mercy, send the spirit of your compassion and understanding into the leaders of our nation and all others in authority. May those leaders be led by your spirit in ways of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you visit the hurting, giving healing and strength. We pray for healing, especially for John Burke, Mary Lou Cordero, Cliff Dykeman, Pat English, Maxon Gilbert, Karen Gallette, Justin Jones, Janelle Joshwick, Frank Kimsey, Jim Lampy, Scotty Imnon, Sally Hollingshad, Ellen Lassant, Ellen Malcolm, Verdine Miller, Darren Murphy, Sherry Palermo, Ruth Pipcorn, John Reynolds, Jan Snath, Wayne Sproul, Ann Wilbur, and Harriet Smith. Are there any others? God of life, like those faithful who have died before us, may we bear the life of Christ to those around us. Comfort those who are grieving, especially Burge and her family as they, as they grieve the death of her husband, Ed. Lord, in your mercy, loving spirit in you, we live and move and have our being. We pray for our central state synod and our delegates as we prepare for the assembly this week. May it truly be a spirit-filled time as issues are discussed, people join in prayer and worship, and as decisions are made. Lord, in your mercy. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stands before the throne, Christ alone, Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. The Lord be with you. So with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and the sending of the holy and life-giving Spirit, we await his coming again to renew the face of the earth. Send now your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this meal. Anoint us with your gifts of faith, hope, and love, that with thankful hearts we may be witnesses to your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
of our Lord Jesus Christ through the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gift of life as we leave here. Help us to know that we belong to you and strengthened by that knowledge and by the food you offer us. Help us to leave this place and share your good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take. The love of God that gives us courage and strength and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about now and forever. Amen. <laughs>